All right, welcome, welcome. This is Judy Weber with the Livy Brain Success Boutique and with Girls Guide to Outrageous Real Estate Success. And I'm super excited to be interviewing Shelton Wilder with Douglas Elliman in Beverly Hills. Hey, Shelton. Hi. <laughs> I don't know. This seems strange. I don't know if it's going to be, it looks like it's all on you, Shelton. For some reason, it's not switching back to me. So that's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hey, everybody. <laughs> I just want to, before I, before I begin the actual interview, I want to give a really brief intro to Shelton. But before I do that, even, you'll see in the chat, I put in, ladies, if you have not yet registered for our brand new agent referral network, please do so. And the URL that I got for this is telling, okay? Thebestwomeninrealestate.com, okay? I'm looking for the best real estate uh, women, and that's you. And so I need you to go to the best real estate women. No, sorry, thebestwomeninrealestate.com. That's why I put it in the chat so I wouldn't forget. And it's a two-step process. First, you have to get an account. This is all free, okay? And second, you have to add yourself as an agent. So then you have to click where it says add agent and do your profile up, put in as much as you want. Um, you can put in whether you're commercial, whether you're residential, whether you're buyers, sellers, all that good stuff. Okay, so with that plug to bed, let me tell you about Shelton Wilder. All right, Shelton has um, a real unique background that I can't wait for you to hear. She is an entrepreneur, she's smart, she's savvy, she has a marketing degree from the University of Georgia. She is super sweet too. Now if you guys, this is episode six of our Outrageously Successful Women in Real Estate. And so if you guys have been following this, I think one thing that you'll see of all this outrageously successful women in real estate that we're interviewing, they are all super focused on providing amazing client service, right? And Shelton's no different. And they have a real heart. They have a real heart for the business, a real passion for the business, and a real heart for people. And Shelton, you'll see once she starts talking, if you, <laughs> if you didn't like peek and, and look ahead at sheltonwilder.com um, and get a glimpse of her and go on her Instagram, you'll definitely want to do that, okay? Because one of the things that we're going to be spending some time on is um, I want Shelton uh, to share some social media secrets because oh, this yeah. woman has almost 15,000 followers, all right? And um, she was voted number five of the top 20 LA agents on social media. And there's so much more I can say, but I think I just want to start questioning and, and get it going. So Shelton, once again, welcome. So glad you're Thank here. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you're the cutest. I'm so <laughs> happy to be here and honored. So thank you so much for reaching out. I'm excited. Super, super. Thank you. Thank you. Well, why don't we start there um, with the beginning? So could, would you mind taking us through that, um, I guess, timeline from college to where we are today? Oh, okay, great. I will let you know. So I went to, I'm from North Carolina, from a small town outside of Charlotte called Gastonia, Sheltonia from Gastonia. <laughs> and then I, but I lived in Charlotte. So I went, um, and then I decided to go to University of Georgia and I got, um, I graduated cum laude from Georgia with marketing. So marketing's always been in my blood, but I've always been a worker. The day that I turned 16, I got a job at Benetton. If y'all remember the store yep. and with top sales and it was all commission. And um, so I just continued in fashion even after I graduated. So, and then I ran the store in Charlotte. I went back to Charlotte after um, college and I ran the store called Capital. And it's really like a Bergdorf Goodman meets Barney's. So it was really high end. And then I became a buyer as well. So I was in New York a lot. And then we kept growing it with clients. And it was all about client services. So then I'd go to their homes and all of this stuff and do of their closets. And it was like a Rachel Zoe of Charlotte. So it was like really in the fashion, but it was all customer. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was in their closet. So it was like, they didn't want to buy anything else without me. <laughs> because they would be there and they'd see if they were like cheating. So it kind of created this really um, family and, and it was, it was, it was just a huge experience. I mean, we turned the store, went from like 240,000 to six and a half million. So it was very like a huge growth. And, um, and so then that happened. And then um, I decided to move to Los Angeles and start a luxury lifestyle management company where it was like styling and shopping and um, planning events. I did like a huge wedding um, in Malibu, planned that. 
And so then that just kept going. And then I was into fashion and then I started a fashion line called Shimmy. And then I was on Shark Tank with my line called Shimmy and I'm wearing it now. It's like a little camisoles and slips and like a little romper. I called the paparazzi protector so you don't show everything when you get in and out of the car. Right. So, wardrobe malfunctions, right? No wardrobe <laughs> malfunctions, ladies. So anyway, I, I had that because I was, you know, the fashion stylist. So I was on, I was on Shark Tank it was all, coming up on almost six years ago. So, and that, and it was amazing and I loved all of it. Um, and, but when I decided I had, um, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And so when I was, um, after I had my first son, I just decided I was like transitioning. And then the clothing line for me, it was, it was manufacturing was just so difficult. I mean, it was like, I was paying to work. I mean, it was, it was really challenging. And even, even with the exposure on the show and everything was great, but it was all like, I know, what is up with that? What? Oh, sorry. I, I, someone unmuted themselves. I'm going to try to mute them again. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. No, okay. every, it's fine. So okay. it, it was more of like, you'd make money and you put it back in. It was just like a linear business. So I just, and I love the service part. So then I just decided, well, what do I like to do best? And what was I best at? And I was like, it was sales and working with people. Cause that's what I liked. It, it, even the clothing business is kind of lonely. You're not really out with people as much. Mm. You're really just, you know, making the project, shipping it, all that stuff. So it wasn't really what I loved. So I decided real estate and so I got my license in my second trimester with my son. So I've only had my license two and a half years. And, but I was just really, once I decided, I just was on the path. Like I just, there was no going back. I mean, I, you know, I was six months pregnant when I was taking my test. So it was just, we're doing this. I'm, you know, moving forward. And I, I've just been never look back. Uh -huh. uh, Awesome. Awesome. Well, one thing interesting in your bio, I think I saw this in your, on your website, um, that you had an appearance on million dollar listing. Can you tell us about that? Oh yeah. Oh, that was great. Well, I love being at Douglas Elliman. I was at a few other companies before and then I've landed at Douglas Elliman and I just, I love it there. It's just perfect for me. And there's a lot of opportunities since, you know, Tracy Tudor Maltis and the Altman brothers are, or Josh Altman, but both of them are on the show. And so they'll reach out and let us know when there's opportunities to be on the show. So I was, I've, I've been on, I think three times, but then this other one was when I was actually brought my investor clients to a property to see, and, you know, they were considering it end up not working out for them, but I was on the show as part of you know, so, and, and that's really great for, for business. I mean, people, people love, love that. My client loved it. You know, my, my investor clients loved it. That it, it, it's, it's a great mm -hmm. marketing tool. Anything TV is great marketing tool. I mean, I know that from being on Shark Tank. So, and being on the million dollar listing was, was great. And everybody's lovely on there. So. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to spend a moment on something else. That's really cool. You did a oh. year of improv. And stand-up comedy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering why I was doing that. And then when I got cast on Shark Tank, I was like, oh, that's what that was for. So I was like actually comfortable doing it. But yes, I did improv and I did stand-up on at the Hollywood Improv for in front of 200 people. It was very, it was really fun. It was just kind of like breaking through a big fear mm -hmm. to do it. But um, yeah, I don't. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. I love that because I'm goofball. Like I've got this very serious side, but I've also yeah. got this super silly, crazy side that you might not expect. So I, I appreciate that. I love that. <laughs> love it. And, and, it, and it helps too, like the improv and all that I've done is that now I do these weekly Wilder Wednesday videos. And it just, you know, these like less than one minute, I put them on Instagram and my page, my website, and it's just, the consistency of that has been great, but most of them I can do in one take. I don't write it down. There's no script. It's just like a one minute, one take wonder. That's what my girl that films me calls. So, <laughs> you know, we can just get the, get the information out and it's, it's all been just, if you look back, you're like, Oh, I wonder why I did that. And then you say, Oh, well it's, it's for this. So I, you know, I'm very comfortable. Like right now when we were getting ready, I can, I'm, I'm very comfortable with the camera now, yeah. which is a, I'm very, I feel blessed about. Right, right. Well, let's yeah. talk about, we could spend like the next hour on video. I don't want to do oh, that. But 
but let's talk about it for a little bit. Okay. You touched okay. on so many things. Number one, um, would you agree with me that women are like really hard on ourselves and you know, right? What, I don't know. What do you think? Oh, put the stick down, put the stick down. <laughs> yes. I completely agree with that. And then, you know, I feel like we're battling perfectionism almost every day. Mm -hmm. That's really kind of what it is. And, um, and that's what I feel like is, it's hard because we're so much harder on ourselves than really anyone else, I think. So, mm -hmm. okay. And that's great because one thing that I'm constantly telling our clients and our students and the girls in girls guide is, Hey ladies, video is where it's at. And video is where someone, you can write a blog and they can say beautifully eloquent words, but nobody's going to get to know you from the yeah. written word nearly as well as if they see you. So can you just take us to your very first Wilder Wednesday? Um, ladies, oh. catch that. That is a weekly or is it bi-weekly? It's week a weekly. Yeah, okay. weekly, a weekly, a video. weekly video. And I started it in January 17. And I... I think I've missed like one or two weeks or something. So I've literally stayed very consistent. And then it started with myself with the diva light. And then I put my cell phone in there and I just would turn it on and do some takes. And that's kind of how I started it. And, and it's, it's very personal. Hey friends, you know, every week, welcome back to Wilder Wednesday. And then, but it's, I feel like it's gotten a little better over time. And now I have someone that films it for me and, um, you know, the production's gotten a little bit better, but it's, it's really, that doesn't matter. It's just about connecting and the consistency. I really feel like that's been the most important part of my business with the social media is that I post every day, six or seven times a week. I, I would say it's at least six times, usually seven times a week. And it is, it just shows that I'm doing real estate every single day that I pop up every day. Like I'm not disappearing, I'm not going to be going anywhere. Nobody's going to like think that I'm just like gone rogue and not doing real estate anymore. So I think for me, that's what's been, and I don't even know if anybody, I mean, I have views on it, you know, sometimes a thousand views or whatever, but I don't even know if people really watch it. It doesn't matter. I think they're just like, there she is again. She's still doing real estate. Like, so I think that's kind of, and then they just see my personality, like, hey, Brent, you know, I'm like very friendly, kind. I'm so Southern. I live in LA, but I'm very Southern still. I've lived here almost 12 years, but, and that kind of warmness, I, I hope. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what I totally get out of you, that you're fun, that you'd be fun to work with. You <laughs> fun. Know, stuff. Yeah. So, so when other than the videos that you do every week, what else are you posting? I know because I've lost your page, but tell oh, me. Yeah kind of where you pull your content from. What do you talk about? Okay. So I have very specific um, content that I have created. And, and so, and especially since I got that award for, you know, top five, they, they did a, an, an award for like top 20 real estate agents in social media. And I was number five. And the people in front of me were Joyce Ray, who's done, you know, $4.5 billion in sales. And she's like, done the business for 45 years. And then uh -huh. the other two girls that are on million dollar listing and then me, and I'm like, I've done it for two years. So I guess I, I feel like I trick people sometimes. <laughs> Not really, but, <laughs> but I mean, I, I've just been so consistent with it. And so I'll post a wilder Wednesday on Wednesday, and then I'll post some inspiration that I find from different, um, interiors that I really love. Like there's like Amber interiors and, and different ones that I just like different blogs that I just love and follow that I'll just, you know, re re tag them in it. And people love that. I mean, some people have said that they'll like, I'll sometimes get 20 saves on, on, on that for people that were taking it and using inspiration for their house. So that makes them think of me. And then they're like, Oh, I like her taste or, you know, if they like what I post and then I'll post either listings or leases or, past sales or, you know, something that I have that, that comes up. And then I will sometimes post like a, a, a significant sale in LA. Like there was one for 85 million recently. And I mean, it wasn't my sale, but it's very significant in Los Angeles and the architects, John Pawson and, you know, the, things like that, that was significant. And then also like on caravan, if we're out and about, then I'll take some shots, be like house of the day or wow, don't you love this? And that's really important too. Even if it's not my listing, I'll say it's not mine, but I will, you know, talk about, and then it'll get the conversation going, oh, send me that. This looks great. Um, 
And then the other thing is it'll be kind of like a lifestyle shoot. So people make fun of me. They're like, what are you taking pictures every day? And, you know, I don't think I'm a model. I'm not, you know, but I do love fashion still. And that, you know, I did that for 20 years. So I will do these, you know, monthly photo shoots and, and then we'll, we'll have some at listings that I have or some around town or like looking at the phone or just lifestyle shoots or like funny, like holding up a Douglas Elliman magazine, just kitschy and not, I, I'm never like very serious or, and then other, I always incorporate like my husband and my family, my two, my two little boys. So that's important that people are like, Oh, she's a human being. Like she, you know, is with her kids, but I do Insta stories every day. It's a huge part of my business. So. Okay. Excellent. Now, before we get off of social media, please give your Instagram handle. Oh, okay. It's Shelton Wilder and then underscore estate. Okay. And I thought that was really important. So Shelton Wilder underscore estate. So I think it's important in your handle to say something about real estate, whether it's your name and real estate or so people, every time your pops up, they're like, Oh, estates or, you know, real estate, whatever, something that, that, that means something to you. So it's like top of mind. Got it. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. What other social media besides Instagram do you regularly post on? Well, I'll just share it directly to my Facebook page. I have around 2000 followers on my Facebook page. Okay. And then I'll put some stuff, not everything on my personal page, which I have about like 2,800 friends. Um, and so, but I don't put everything on that page because I don't want to annoy my friends too much, but if it's a new listing or a new lease or, oh, and, and I definitely add my testimonials. So I have a gal helping me and then she'll like put it in a really nice, um, Frank, you know, it, so it looks really pretty. Like my whole page, ha- it, it has a theme. It, it looks really pretty. It's, it's organized. Um, there, there's a really great app, you guys. It's called UNUM, UNUM, or there's one called Planoly. And they're great. So you can actually put photos in to see what it looks like on the grid before you post it. Okay. And I'm sorry, is it the letters U-N-U-M? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then the other one is Planoly. Is that P-L-A-N-O-L-Y? Planoly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Excellent. All right. I, I, I could, I might come back to some of this. Yeah, you can come back to it. I mean, social is a, is, is a really big part of my thing. And, you know, I have never bought any followers. It's all engagement. I mean, sometimes I'll get 80 comments. I mean, and I try to comment back to everybody. That's important too. But it's really, that's really grown. Cause when I'll meet people, I'll say, Oh, let's follow each other. And then that's yeah. how stays. That's how we stay in contact. And they're like, you know, she's still doing real estate because I am a mom. I mean, I got my license when I was, you know, with my second baby and I was right. pregnant right. and I had done businesses before. And I feel like people are like, Oh really? What is she doing now? You know, that kind of thing, like with friends or people that I know. So I needed them to know that I'm not going anywhere. This is all I'm going to do. I'm not doing styling anymore. I'm not doing, you know, I'll connect people to different people, but I'm just doing real estate. And they need to see also, I think that with women, we can come across, it can be a hurdle sometimes with people saying, oh, well, she's a mom. I don't want to bother her or something. And I'm like, oh no. Like I, of course, I love my babies and I am such, you know, I'm so dedicated as a mom, but I don't want that to deter somebody because I am a mom. So I, they need to see that I do real estate every single day. Love that. Love that. Okay. Because I know that we have a bunch of ladies, you know, almost 23,000 yeah. ladies in Girl's Guide. There Yay, are, that's so amazing. Are, oh, you you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. But thank you so much. Um, but these ladies either are in, cor- a, lot, a lot of them are in corporate jobs and they do real estate part-time and you know, that's hard. Very. And, or they're stay-at-home moms and they are trying to do real estate on the side. So what advice would you have for those kind of women who really, really want to break in full time, but they have these other obligations for financial, you know? So what advice might you have for them to really maximize their time? So I, for me, it's, it was that social media building and, and letting the friends know and the people that you know that this is what you do all the time. So it's not part-time. That's why a consistent post getting a really good, strong social media is, is important. Even if you're just reposting other things, I mean, it doesn't matter just so it's a beautiful, 
page and people know that you're in real estate and doing real estate. And it's making those phone calls too. Okay. Talk, talk about that. What phone calls? So, okay. So you got to call people and it can be uncomfortable and, but it's, there's this awesome, yeah, I mean, there's this one guy that we talk about in our office a lot and his name's Fred Wilson and, it, and he just talks about calling and making the calls and calls. And it's really just the exploration and like the discovery to call and talk about you know, going deeper with, with people and asking them more questions. So, I mean- but, but are you calling, are you calling people in your sphere, in your yes. inner circle? Okay. Calling okay. sphere. And it's, it's hard sometimes, but then, you know, it can go into, oh, what are you doing? And then what are you doing? And, and it's just, and it's letting them know it's not like a hard sell or anything. I'm not very good at a hard sell. You know, my, most of my businesses, I mean, I think like 90, I think like 100% has come from referrals. Okay. That was my so, next question. Where did you get, yeah. what is the source of your leads? Okay. So it's been from referrals. So my first sale, I, I love this story. I'm sorry. I'm just going to tell it is I had a dear friend and we were close just, you know, through being social with each other. And she knew that I was breaking into real estate and they were looking for a house. And so they gave me a chance. I got a buyer's agreement for three months with them, but I mean, I was so pregnant. Okay. It was, it was crazy. So then we finally did it. We beat out, we lost on two houses. Then we beat out on the perfect house, 25 offers. Wow. It, it was, it was great. We went, we beat out 25 offers and, but the escrow was insane. I mean, it was really insane. And we finally were closing on it and I was in the hospital. I was literally in the hospital birthing my child. Oh my and then goodness. we did the walkthrough with my eight day old baby. I brought the nanny, my husband, my two year old, my eight day old. I mean, it was like this, but the commitment was there. Like I was not going to be like, Oh, well fine. You know, I'm just going to let, let it go. You know, whatever happens. This is a huge deal. It was such a privilege and honor for anybody to even trust me with that first sale. I mean, this is like the biggest deal in their whole lives. I'm not just going to, Oh, I'm sorry. I have a baby. Like you figure it out. That's it's not how I can ever be. Uh -huh. So I think that that just shows the commitment and the dedication. That's why I, I share that because I'm never going to leave my clients hanging. Like it's, yes. it's so full service. That is so excellent. And I know that, gosh, I have so many questions in my mind. And before I get off of that, what I wanted to say is um, one thing that we are really big on, Jan and I, uh, yeah. when we teach our clients and our students, is um, when you're at a listing presentation, to be sure to tell stories rather yeah. than say I'm the best. And so as you relay that story, that's a story that I would imagine you're telling at every chance you can to just make that point. <laughs> You know, that I, you I, I need, this is a good reminder. I need to make sure I'm telling it. Cause a lot of times I'll tell about, you know, like, like a listing that I had where we, we got 111,000 over asking and eight, eight offers in five days. But like, I think that the emotional, the emotional part of the story is, is so important, you know, where, where like, you're never leaving somebody hanging, you know, you're never, you're, I'm always I mean, my clients become family. I mean, close friends and, and, and it just, we get so, you get so deep with somebody. I mean, that's why I think the styling part of it is so similar and why I could transition so easily because I was seeing people naked. That's pretty intimate. And now I'm seeing your finances and I'm seeing your house and inside your home. I mean, it's the most intimate thing you could ever do with somebody. Right. I, mean, I love that. Really, yeah. I know so, because when I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm doing full-time training and coaching now, but that oh, talks about, Hey, you know, this is your most intimate thing. I mean, I'm talking about your home and it's the most expensive investment you're ever going to make. So yeah, this is serious business. So you can it, count on me. Yeah. Yeah. It's very serious. And, and that's why taking it seriously is, is, is so important. That's that personal side to it. I think that, that we, as women, we really can have, we have that. We right. can go really, really deep. But then, as I was telling you earlier, that's why I call myself like the real estate therapist and I wear my crown of patience because that is my superpower, I think. Patience with people because, I mean, and not in a negative way. It's just, it's, it's really such a huge deal. I mean, buying a house, selling a house, it's so emotional. Mm -hmm. So you have to be, I mean, I, I want to be there for my clients to go, 
through it all, the hand-holding, the white glove service, but like the hand-holding, the multiple calls a day. I mean, it's, that's why I think sometimes people want to pick, you want to pick the person to work with that you're going to want to call. Right. I mean, you, you have to, you have to talk a lot to your agent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Who do you want to talk to that much? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I see that you call yourself your personal shopper for luxury real estate and yeah. you cater to that level of client. So how do you, um, we talked about your lead sources, but I'm curious, how do you go after that market? What are you affirmatively doing other than social media or is that your primary outreach? No. So social media, but then also, you know, I meet a lot of people through school and mom groups and things like that. So that's, that's been amazing. And um, like my first listing was with a friend and we were, did our baby group together. And so, you know, she gave me a chance and it worked out so great. And then we sold her house and bought her house and, you know, it was, it was really wonderful. And so that's been great. But I was, when you sent me the questions, I was thinking about it. And what I found is networking groups are, I mean, I want to throw out everything else except for networking groups and, and going to events with, with friends and, and moms and things, because that is my number one source is like, we're, we're is the networking group. So I just joined and I started a chapter of BNI. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Oh, sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're starting that now. I've already gotten two referrals from it and our chapter's not even launched. I mean, it's like crazy. So I, and that's like a consistency every Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. We meet, we talk about, and then you, you get up and you say what you're looking for and what you have. And it's just great practice. And then, you know, we're going to try to grow it to like 40. I think we have about 12 people now, but just imagine when it's 40 people, it's only been 12 and there are two referrals and I've done it for a month, you yeah. know? So, so that's, that's incredible. And then I've joined, I'm also in this group called she built it. And it's another like group of, of women. That's incredible. I love the founder, Melanie. Um, so that's been great. I've found a lot of, you know, referrals from that. And then I had a friend from there and she just, um, refer me to this other one called business chicks. I mean, it's just a lot of, a lot of, um, networking and somebody else told me about this other one called Ivy. I can't wait to sign up for yours. I want to be a part of your referral source. Like I I'm serious. I mean, these referral things are, are incredible. So, um, you know, I just, this, for instance, I've done two referrals this year already. One, I found, um, a friend from social media. She saw me on Shark Tank. We were friends on social media. And then I found her an agent in Denver and then she already closed in her house. She was thrilled with the agent. So I got a referral from that. And then it came up where the guy in BNI, he needed his parents-in-law were selling in Kansas city. They didn't like their agent. So I found him an agent within one day. They had two listing appointments signed with the agent and it's, it was sold within a week, less than a week. Wow. So, yeah. So, so those are, those are the kind of things that I love working on. So I want to be a part of your group because that is, I mean, what you're building with 23,000 women, it's just incredible. So that, that, that to me and face to face and actual phone calls are, that's everything more than Facebook ads. I mean, I've tried it and the Instagram ads and the, and I've tried like mailer, like now we're in a new neighborhood. We've got a house. So I want to do some mailers in my neighborhood, but I think the really the the networking groups, the face to face, is is has been so huge. And we do door knock, so I have a mentee, and then we have an area, and we do door knock. But we've been so off on it. We did. We haven't gotten a listing from it yet. We have a potential one, and it's a three point eight million dollar listing. You know, so it could be very worth it. We just have to find her the right house, and the right thing hasn't come up for her to move yet. But so there are a lot of great things that come from it, but the consistency that I stay with is you have to do what you like too. You know, I mean, yes. I like door knocking with Leah. Uh -huh. Like I love it with her, but by myself, I'm not going to go by myself. For me, I don't feel safe. I don't want, you know, and then I don't, if someone invites you in, then you don't want to be there by yourself. So I just, I love doing it with her or if I did it with someone else, but what I like is networking. I like talking to people. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. And you've said so much, ladies. I mean, I hope you have your, you know, your tablets of paper out and your pens because you've said so much that, oh. that, that <laughs> I just love it. And, and we're all about doing what you want. We talk, we start with brand you, 
right? I mean, this is your business. So you are all over your business. And I think a lot of times we women, we, unlike men, we're not going to like be all about ourselves. And so a lot of times I found that women don't consider themselves necessarily an entrepreneur. They're really working for Coldwell oh. Banker or in your case, Douglas Element. No, and so, no, no. Your and, brand. You're right. So it starts with you, you, you. And then we say, okay, so what do you like? And what are your natural God-given talents? And so then when you kind of think about that and what do you like to do, then you look at your lead gen and say, okay, you know what? I love talking to people. So maybe I'll try networking events or maybe I'll try the door knocking or the calling, you know, um, calling out even to strangers, not necessarily even on your inner circle. Yeah. But I kind of want to put you on the spot. And so you'll have to forgive me. Okay. okay. But again, when you are at an event with one of your sweet boys and oh. you're introduced to you know another mom or something how do you in that first interaction do you say you're a real estate agent or are you just very soft and can you tell us about that so i i really try to be subtle about it i mean a lot of like coaches or other things would say you know, just go after it and go in and get your card out. But like I, it's, it's very personal. So if we're like in an art class or we're, you know, meeting people, the first thing I'm not going to say like, hi, I'm Shelton. I'm a real estate agent. You know, like I, it can take a minute. Someone wants to get to know you. So if I see them multiple times and I'll just mention, if they ask what I do, I'll say, or if it comes up like, oh, what are you doing later today? Then I'll be like, oh, I'm showing a few properties. So then it can come up in conversation, but I'm, I'm not really a, like a hard sell, but the, but the thing that I like to do is that I'll be, Oh, let's follow each other on social. And then they can kind of see what I'm doing. So they're not, they know that I'm not just a random that like does real estate once in a blue moon. They're like, Oh wow. She's like really involved. Serious. Yeah. She's and, real and serious. And, and I do it every day. So, so that's kind of how I've seen that it comes up. And then, um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not that pushy about it. I'm just, I'm sure maybe my say, like my sales could be more and this and that, but, but I just, I want to also be their friend. I mean, there are a lot of times that there's people that I'm like, I really like, and, and if it turns into something great, but if it doesn't, then that's fine. I just want to be of service. I want to be helpful. So sometimes things have come up like recently one girl and she was like, Oh, and then we're, we're leaving, like we're leaving this house. We don't know if we're going to buy or lease. And I'm like, oh my God, well, I have some pockets coming up. And I say things like that because I do have a lot of pocket listings. I do know a lot about stuff because, oh, the other thing that I do that's really important mm -hmm. that I wanted to share here um, is that I really respect agents. I am kind of obsessed with the top agents. Like I follow all of them. I comment to them. I write thank you notes when I go to see their listings so they know who, my, who I am they know my name so then that way I can get into you know show clients you know their homes and they're like oh well she's respectful and and I mean they're these are legends like I consider the big agents in LA I mean the amount of billions in sales some of them are done it's just it's incredible to me so I'm very respectful and thoughtful of their time and who they are and you know complimenting them because I want to be like, you know, I want to grow and learn from them. So, so that's a big, that's a huge part of my business mm -hmm. um, is, is knowing the agents and great agent relationships. So then I will find out about what their pockets are. We will be able to discuss. They do take me seriously. Mm -hmm. They see me. I do caravan every week. They see me every week. I'm not just like randomly. I, I always show up for that. Mm -hmm. So, so I know that the inventory of what's going on. So a lot of people just skip that, but I, it's, it's, imperative for me. See, and what you said is so important because, um, you know, just showing up is like 90% of it. So that you <laughs> get, up. right. So you get the name recognition. Now pocket listings aren't as prevalent in various different parts of the country. I think in more oh. metro centers like Philly, where I am, or DC or New York. Um, but I did see on your bio how you pride yourself on researching to find those coming soon and things oh. like that. So can you tell us about that a little bit? So so that that's with the agent relationships really. And then there's there's some services that that are out here called like the PLS, the pocket listing service, and there's a Facebook group that's the pocket listings that I'm a part of. But but really, I mean my so my mentor now is um, the one that brought me into Douglas Elliman. It was TELUS before, and he's the president of Douglas Elliman. Is Peter Hernandez. I love him so dearly. He's like my real estate dad. He jokes that he calls me. He said, oh, your new tagline should be your real estate stalker. 
because that's what she says. That, because I really do. I stalk the people down. I'm like, thank you so much. I like text the follow up fortunes and the follow up fortunes and the follow up. And so I'm just always, you know, checking in with people. Do you have anything coming up? I mean, it's, it's a, it's important. It's mm -hmm. important to like be working for your clients or even like I've, you know, they've wanted a certain neighborhood. I'll go door knock that neighborhood, you know, and then the energy of that comes up, something perfect comes up and it's, it's happened multiple times. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's the other thing that I want to talk about. And then one more thing that going back to what you're saying about your business is you is that my husband, he's an attorney. He is the reason I feel that I can do this business too. He's so helpful and he's really, you know, supported me and, um, you know, pushed me to do things, but it gives him hives, anxiety. He cannot watch my videos. He does not want to see, he, it, he it makes him so, he's like, oh God. And he's always saying, oh, you are the biggest self promoter I've ever met. And I'm like, yeah, buddy. Cause who else is going to do it? Okay. I said, I am not a secret agent. Okay. People need to know what I'm doing. You know, it's, it's different because he's so like, you know, subtle and attorney. And then I'm just like, hey, this is what I do. And so, but you you can't be a secret agent. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be out there and promoting and like branding yourself is, is, is huge. And it's great. Your brokerage is great. But like I've switched three times. Like I know where I'm going to be now. You know, that's a lot of change. And so people usually don't really care where you are. They want to work with you. But now I love Douglas Selman. I have all the backing and all the bells and whistles that they have. But like, you know, I'll hashtag Douglas Elman, but I, you know, my slogan is, you know, open the door to wilder possibilities. I mean, wilder possibilities like that. It's, it's me. It's my brand. All this is what I've, nobody's giving me listings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. Listen, what, one of the most amazing things you've said thus far, and you've said a lot is what you said with your husband. You're the biggest self promoter. And you say, darn right. Yeah. <laughs> Who else is going to? I love that. It's going to do it. And so, yeah. I, and, and now he just looks at me and we, I was preparing this morning and looking at my questions and watching your videos. And, and he was like, you're such a go-getter. He's like, you know, he's like really proud, but he just, yeah. you know, he yeah. gets embarrassed because I, you know, it is like a, hard to put yourself out there, but people, and if they don't like it, who cares? Let them unfollow you. Like, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's so many that will like you. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. great. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's, let's, let's talk about listing appointments for just a moment. Oh, okay. okay. Because you have uh, such stiff competition where you are in Beverly Hills. I mean, let's face it. So, oh, yeah. so can, would you mind sharing with us what you do in your listing presentation or, and I, I just want to preface it by saying this, I work for a number of different brokerages, Coldwell Banker, oh, uh, yeah. Berkshire Hathaway, Weikert, all of them. And they all, have these 40 page kind of boring uh listing I presentations. so <laughs> i wondered i'm sure douglas element has some amazing uh pages in that presentation so anyway i'll be quiet you tell us please what what is you what is your claim to fame and success there okay well i what i think that that i do that is maybe a little different is I have all of the bells and whistles from Douglas Elliman and it's incredible. We have this black book. We have all of these beautiful, this presentation and I, you know, have it printed out and I have my gratitude in there, which is all my testimonials. And then I do all the CRM and all the comps and everything. So I'm very prepared and I show like the Elliman magazine and all, all these different things. So it shows that you're with an incredible brokerage and it's very impressive, mm -hmm. but I don't spend the whole time on that. I really, I like to talk to the clients about themselves and I have my little gold notebook that I walk around with and I take notes of their home and I get to know their dogs and their kids and I care about them and like what their needs are. I really ask them like what their number is, what they're looking for, why they're moving, what is their why, like where they're going, what is going to make them most comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think that that's important, but writing down notes in their home and not just kind of being like, oh, I got this or what, like that shows that you really are being thoughtful and caring about them. And I use the notes, they're important. I mean, somebody spending an hour, two hours with you, that's a big deal for somebody. So um, just being really respectful of that and their time. And I mean, I think that 
I, that I guess that's one of my my things that I do. I mean, obviously sharing the knowledge and, and everything, and then I could also go over like the different strategies of the pricing. And so there's a big thing about pricing in LA, like it's called event pricing. I don't know okay. if you guys have that. No, can you tell us about that? I'm curious. Yeah. So there's a way that we can work with, with our clients here and the market is shifting here for sure, but where you can do a lot of like the um, pocket listing, pre-marketing, getting, getting to know kind of what, like cheating the market where you say like, okay, what, what do you think it will really go for? And you can get some feedback on that. Gotcha. So that's really important. And then you can do, it depends on the house. Like some of these huge major luxury homes, they do this thing called aspirational pricing which is like the $250 million listing, you know, now it's listed for 188 million, you know, but it's just like, it's like the wow number, like to get, it's, it's almost like a marketing tool, right. that number, or then there's pricing it at market rate, which usually gets between 5% up or down is usually going to be the price that's going to sell. Or there's event pricing, E V E N T like creating an event where it kind of, especially that's been such a seller's market recently. And if you have a great property and then you price it low, you can get that eight offers, 10 offers. And so it creates kind of like a bidding war and an auction like setting for some buyers don't like it. Okay. But the sell it's, it's good for sellers because then it gets the house on the market sold and it gets backup offers because it's really always good to have, you know, mm -hmm. a backup offer if you can. So it holds them. So they don't, you know, do like a lot of, request for repairs or tries to mess with you in escrow or different things. So it's just, it's a great tool using that. And then we decide, and it's really, the other thing that I always say to people is that I'm just an, I'm your agent. I'm your advocate. I'm your agent, but I will never make a decision for you. It's not my job. It's not my place to make a decision for you. So everything will be run by you. I mean, I, I think some, some agents can, I mean, I'm not putting anybody down, but like can, you know, really like go for it and and but it's not their decision every single tiny little thing is the client's decision gotcha and you guide them but it's ultimately their choice yeah a every time and and i i don't want to you know take that lightly so you i, I want to let them know that that's going to be their choice through through the process so how we decide to um to price and and all different things so. okay Excellent. And so at the end of the presentation, do you ask for the business and you assume the business right there? Or uh, it may be different in LA, uh, you know, especially if they're interviewing a bunch of agents. So I mean, I love to, to ask for the business and I, I'll bring the listing agreement that can be signed or I, it just kind of depends on, it depends on, on the moment. I mean, I like to give people a chance to to consider. I mean, I know some people would say, don't do that or whatever, but I, I want to work with people that want to work with me. Mm -hmm. I don't want someone to feel super pressured into sign it right now or did it, you know, it, <laughs> like, it, I just, I want to work with them if they want to work with me. And I mean, it happened recently where I went to one and then, I mean, then they were like reconsidering and another agent was really being pushy and pushy and pushing to them. But then they just, they ultimately went with me mm -hmm. because they just felt more, more comfortable or, and then they liked that I was with Douglas Elliman and they liked my social media and then they liked my past sales and like the different, and I go above and beyond. I mean, I have a whole team that I work with. I have an assistant, I have a property prep. I have people working with me on social media. I have a girl that does my newsletter. I mean, I need a lot of help. You know, I, I, I don't say that I do this all on my own and, and I, you know, my assistant's been doing this for 25 years. She's worked on some of the biggest deals with the biggest celebrities in the world. I mean, that's like, I love her to death. You know, she's, she's like a secret weapon. And I, I share those things mm -hmm. with her. I say, mm -hmm. you know, that Peter Hernandez has done the business for 48 years that I call him, you know, he mentors me, you know, and Sarah has done it for 25 years and she's worked on these deals. So I don't try to trick anybody. They know I'm newer, mm -hmm. but I'm so dedicated that, you know, and I'm not working on a hundred listings at a time. I really am holding their hand the whole way. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing the open houses. I'm available. I'm there. I'm doing the phone calls. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're scaling, I understand like when, you know, in 10 years we'll have this call again and I won't be able to do every open house cause I'll have like 20 listings or whatever. But at this time, you know, I really care for, 
for each of those buyers and each of those sellers. So I love that. And I'm sure they appreciate that because of the fact that you give them that super duper white glove treatment. So. Yeah, the white glove treatment. I'm like, oh, the property prep's going to come in. We're going to give you quotes. I'm going to bring in three stagers. We're going to see what they say. Then we're going to decide. I mean, it's it's not just like you're. I'm leaving you off on, on your own. We have a whole strategy the whole way through. And that's excellent because Jan, my sister, who you haven't met yet, um, if she were right here, I might, I thought, I might think you'd be confused as to whether it's me or her. But anywho, oh, cute. Uh, she has a team of a bunch of ladies. But more than that, she's got her posse. She calls it of contractors, go-to contractors, and plumbers, yeah. electricians. And so, for those ladies who may be listening that don't have that already set up, what could be your best advice for them to establish? you know, that posse for them, that go-to source for these different things? Oh, ask all the other agents, ask big agents, ask other agents, ask, you know, other clients that you've had, who their favorite people are, get that list together, get the inspectors, get everything. Even if you don't have the listings yet, you just get the list together. So it just looks so organized <laughs> so that it, it, it really is just like a, you know, one-stop shop that you, because that's the other thing for me is I want people to call me about everything. Like I work with this lady that does these beautiful culinary um, concierge service. It's kind of like my luxury lifestyle background. Like I want people to call me for anything and everything. Like I have a $45,000 a month lease right now. That's this gorgeous listing. And then I found some people then were, you know, working with them to get their property ready. And I mean, it's, it's just important to, to have, yeah, your posse. And even if you're not working with them every day in and day out, that you've had a conversation with them and they know who you are and, you know, you can refer, mm -hmm. refer to them, but it's good to give multiple referrals. Referrals can kind of be <laughs> scary. So, cause they're not you. So it's good to have multiple ones and say, Hey, here's, here's some people that please do your own due diligence. And, you know, here's some ones to call and you want to make sure that they yep. call as well, but, but it's good. Just, yeah, your team, your list of people is important. Excellent. Well, one thing we're running out of time. I knew we'd go fast, oh. but um, we got about 10 more minutes left, but um, commercial and residential. Yes. Both. And I think that's kind of unique. So could you speak to that and, and what you do kind of maybe how you split your day between the two, or if it's more fluid than that, can you help us? Understand? Well, mine is, mine is mostly residential, but it's been coming up to where people ask me, like I had um, someone that needs a space for, you know, one of my clients that needs a space for like a women's place and th you know, different things that come up, like the cl client that I'm selling her listing right now, she needs a space for her new businesses. So why am I going to say no? I mean, I already network with everybody. Like just, of course, yes, yes. And you just partner up with people. You bring other people on that know more about it, but you're a point person because I don't just want to just send it off to somebody and just get a referral because that doesn't work. I tried that one time. It doesn't work. So for me, I stay involved because people want to talk to you. Like they, they want your opinion. So I go to the look at things with them and, and look at properties. They want my opinion. And then I have a new client that's looking for these spaces and he knows that I hear about things. I'm around, you know, a really affluent network of people like celebrities and, but not just that, but just great people. And we hear great things and I have my ears open all the time. I'm always asking and they want somebody like that. That's, you know, a hustler, <laughs> you know, just like always, you know, right. listening and knowing what's going on. And so, you know, and he said, Oh, well, we're looking for a property, you know, small projects between 35 and 50 million. I'm like, no problem. I got it. Got it. You know, a I mean, small project, eh? <laughs> I mean, why say no? I think people get so scared and like you were losing out on so much business because if they're buying a house, they might have, you know, income properties that they want to do. I mean, don't lose out on the business. Just find somebody to team with or, or just learn what you're going to learn it. Mm -hmm. why, why not? So that, that's been a, a big thing for me. It's just, I, I just, I always say yes. Okay. There you go. And we've heard that before. So this is so yeah. good. Ladies, if you're paying attention to these and you're following them on our YouTube page or here in Girl's Guide, you really, really, I hopefully you're seeing that pattern, you know, always saying yes, doing whatever you're asked. And if you don't know how, don't feel bad that you don't know how, just ask your broker or somebody to help you because yeah. You can learn by doing, and Shelton is a beautiful example of that. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> just saying yes, just 
You never know. You can figure it out, right? There's well, always a way to figure it out, right? Okay, yeah. excellent. All right, well, I have a question for you. And this is mindset. You know, okay. earlier I was telling you I was kind of having a rough day. And we have that in real estate or in any business, really. Running a yeah. business is not, you know, for the faint of heart. And so how do you stay on track, Shelton? Do you intentionally do affirmations in the morning and the evenings? Kind of what's your way of staying on task? Okay, that's a great question. So I really believe I have this, my kind of mantra is positron, positron. And I just like got to get my mind back to being in the positive. And, you know, I pray, I try to meditate some, but it's mostly just, you know, praying and just breathing and getting, getting forward with the day. And I, yeah, it's just so important, the mindset. And then also like the manifesting, I really believe in manifesting. Like I'm next week, my girls are coming over. We're doing vision boards again. I mean, I have a huge goal this year. It's 40 million and I think I'm going to hit it. Like I'm, you know, on track to hit it and that'll be my third year. And so it's just like, you know, but if I don't hit it, that's okay. But like, if I, what if I hit half, no problem, you know, half a million dollars, no problem. So it's just, but it's just working towards something and then seeing that goal, seeing that vision board, having it written somewhere, seeing it often, saying it often. I say it a lot. You know, I just, you're saying, can you, can you give us some, I'll, I'll say like, you know, I'm going to sell a million dollars this year. I'm going to sell, you know, make a million dollars this year, make a million. Anyway, I just say it and say it and say it until you believe it. I mean, all the things that I've done, my whole life so far. I mean, I didn't know anybody in LA. I just started a business. Oh, I'm just going to start a clothing line. You just figure it out. I mean, you just keep saying, oh, I'm going to be on Shark Tank. Oh, and then it just happens. So you just, it, it's, I really believe in that positive energy and putting it out there and the manifesting and what you put out, you bring back in. And, you know, I wanted to have this type of client. I'm going to work with these type of people, like just saying it over and over. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I try to be really thoughtful about exercising and, and, you know, right now I'm, oh, and I listen to Tony Robbins sometimes, you know, I went to his thing and walked on fire last year. I mean, I'm like one of those people. I like do all of these self-help things and it's, it's important to me. And I have a lot of mentors and advisors that I'll, I'll call and be able to spill everything and, and just say what's going on. And then I bring it back. I do Byron Katie worksheets. I mean, I don't know if you know her, but like, you know, it's, and, and it's always bringing it back to myself and not blaming or being a victim, just moving forward. Right. So, I, I don't believe in victimese. That's what I call it. Speaking I, of love it. I love it because there are, um, I, I hate it. I'm a member of many Facebook groups for yeah. women, real estate agents and, and, you know, other, not just women, some of them have men too, but it's women who I see posting that they're about ready to quit. The oh. men will never say that, whether they, yeah. they'll just kind of disappear. Right. But what I found is that the women, we are always so darn honest, which is a good thing, but then we're so darn hard on ourselves. And so yeah. I personally think that women really, really have to build each other up. And that's why girls guide. I'm so darn proud that we do not, it was a zero, this zero tolerance for negativity. Oh, zero. I mean, you. if I see any of that, they're tossed. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I kick out of there, you know, ASAP as soon as I see that crap because it's so important to stay on target it really is and to stay positive and um let me just say and to build each other up like you said build each other up support right. each other right and so and so I can look at everybody every woman out, out there and say that she's beautiful and yet sometimes I look in the mirror and I say you're getting old you're getting fat you're getting and you just have to say no you have to say no to that no so I'm kind of talking to myself as I'm throwing it out there this is you have to stay positive guys yeah. and and go to a smiling face like mine or Shelton's or one of your mentors out there it is so important to stay positive um, somebody is sharing a screen, so I'm going to please stop that. Let's see. Um, Leanne, you, you're sharing your screen. If you can please get out of that and stop that. <laughs> All right, we'll keep going. Um, Leanne, if you could please stop the screen share. I, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Okay, so what's the one piece of information, Shelton, that you have today? that you wish you had um, you know, on day one? Hmm. One piece of information. <laughs> or the one that piece of advice. That is a really good question. 
question. That's really, really good. Um, I mean, let's see. Gosh, that's so hard. I, I think I think what I would say to my former self, like just starting, is that, you know, I practice patience and you know, my crown of patience with my clients, but practicing patience with myself. That it's it is it's not an overnight thing. I mean, I didn't join a team and I didn't, you know, I what didn't start as an assistant. So it just it's gonna take a minute for someone to trust you with their biggest purchase of their their life, usually, you know, one of their biggest purchases. So it's just, you know, just be gentle with myself, you know, just, just be kind. Cause I think I was really, you know, like I got frustrated in the first year. I thought, Oh, I'm going to sell blah, blah, blah. You know, but then the second year I sold over, you know, $200,000, you know? So it's just, it's a, it's, it's just like being kind and just patient a little bit more with, okay. with myself. And I mean, I, th I think that's what I would say. Right. Is that, I yeah, yeah. I was really hard on myself. I was really yeah. hard on myself. Okay. Yeah, so. and realizing it sounds like you had like super high aspirations and goals, um, which is yeah. A good I was like, oh, I'm going to sell fifty million my first year. I mean, that that's like, it's fine to have goals, but like, let's take it down a notch. Like, don't. I mean, don't get do some goal where you're going to be so frustrated. You know, if it if it doesn't come true, and then you feel like a failure and all this. So right. don't. I don't believe in that move. So I, I would say just that it just, it's like another agent said this too. It's like, just stay with it because by that year three, you can make that like half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really possible, but like just staying consistent and just realizing that, you know, right. Right. Rome yeah. wasn't built in a day. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is exactly. It's not built in a day. And it's, I mean, unless your family or somebody, you know, gives you some huge listing in the first you know, beginning time. I mean, it takes, pra it's, it's called real estate practice. It's a practice. Love so it. it's like practicing writing offers. You know, it, it's just, it's a practice and it takes a while for people to, to, to trust you. So, but it just, once you can hit that level, then it just, the growth is exponential. So Excellent. that's what I would say. I love it. I love it. It's like, it's like your husband's law practice and I used to yeah. practice law and it's a practice. So you don't have to beat yourself up uh, if you don't know every answer, or if you don't know every form or if you don't know every procedure, oh. because our phone is our friend. Our phone is our friend. <laughs> best friend, best friend. I mean, yeah, that's what that, my nickname's the communication queen. Cause it is like, you know, you gotta just be on. Oh yeah. you got to take every call. you got to answer the phone. You've got to get back to, I mean, that's, that's so important mm -hmm. too. So I love that. And you know why? Because that's so back to basics, but it's yeah. so important. It is so frustrating for a client when they're trying to reach you and you don't answer your phone or if you don't call them back. So that's oh. like so basic, but it's so darn important. I love it's it. It's so important. Just even sending the text, like in a meeting, call you back. Like I totally hear you. And I hear you. I hear you. Mm -hmm. It's a big thing. That's great. Well, listen, Shelton, I so appreciate your time. I can't believe our hour's up. Oh my um, gosh, thank, you. thank you so much for your time. And I'm sure the ladies echo that sentiment. And um, please do, you know, join us over in Girl's Guide. Oh, and I will. I will. I mean, that, that referral is part is, is incredible. I mean, because I want to have a good referral system when things come up. I mean, I didn't know anybody in Kansas City, so I got it through another referral. Then I interviewed them. So I, I would love to give referrals in your, in your network. I, I think that's amazing. Excellent. Thank excellent. All right, Shelton, thanks again. Thank you, ladies. And we'll see you next time. Take good Bye. care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, hun.